Here's our equation. Uh, maybe we've forgotten the problem. Let's go back to the problem. What now? Um, the, the question it's asking is, what is the uh, minimum thickness of uh, D, I guess, or minimum thickness Good. of coating? Yeah, and that is D. So we just definitely write down our question mark that indicates what the question is. All right, well, let's try to proceed with solving the problem now. Oh, I'm sorry. We're still not done here. Um, well, we would have how do you, I'm, uh, uh, just to interrupt, how do you find lambda m? Remember, this is the new wavelength inside the film. This well, is the it, it, uh, it gives us. Now, the wavelength they gave you was 570, right? Yes. However, that's the wavelength in the air. We would use the symbol of lambda for that. That's, what was, that's the wavelength of uh, what the uh, light was in the air. Okay. We still need to figure out the new wavelength inside the film. On this type of problem, they almost always give you the wavelength in the air, even though they don't specifically say that. Um, they give you the wavelength in the air, but this formula is supposed to be based on the wavelength in the film, because that's where the path length difference is. Remember, that's why we were using the symbol lambda n over here. So we need to remember, how do we find, well, will the wavelength in the film be bigger or smaller than 570? It's going to be, uh, it's going to be uh, smaller. By what factor? N. Yeah. The whole logic here is that when you move into uh, this medium, you're going to be slowed down. Your speed is going to be slowed down by a factor of 1.25. And since f is constant, we've memorized that. Lambda has to be decreased by a factor of 1.25. Well, here's that equation that we wrote down. The new wavelength is the old wavelength over n. So in our formula here, we can't use lambda. We have to use lambda over n, lambda divided by n. All right, now we're ready to solve the problem. And we want to use n equals 1, correct? I think so. Why, how do you know you should use that one? Because that's going to give us, uh, that would be the only thing that would work with the minimum thickness. Yeah, if you want D to be minimized on the left-hand side, you've got to minimize the right-hand side. So that's the exact type of thinking you want to use. So we need the minimum M, which is not zero here, but one. This is supposed to be the coating on a lens. So we would expect the coating would be quite thin. It's the lens that's the big bulk here. They're just putting this coating around it over here. OK. Uh, all right, that seems good. All right, so what were the hard parts here? Well, um, first of all, you got to draw this picture and label all the ends. Notice that we never needed to actually use this number. That's why we didn't care if it was 1.5 or 1.6. We have to, have to know if it's bigger than this one. Uh, and that told us how many inversions there were. Well, every time you're coming up across a higher um, end, you have to invert. Well, here we had the two inversions. Um, and that meant that actually, after all those inversions are over, the two waves would still be in phase. So we just want them to go path length differences of whole wavelengths to stay in phase. And um, the thing that's very easy for people to forget is that we don't want to plug in the original wavelength. We want to plug in the original wavelength divided, um, reduced by a factor of n. How do I know it's so easy for people to forget that? Because I've forgotten that in every problem we've done so far. So we have to keep remembering to plug that in over here. All right, and then they said minimum D. Well, that means the minimum M over here. All right, um, one thing that would be very easy, I think, is to plug in the wrong end here, because we have three different ends, 1, 1.25, 1 and 1 1.5. But what we want here is the end of the film, because that's where the path length difference occurs. 